rhyming Romy. Book three, last novel. No, I can't. <laughs> Uh, this is from The Man Who Prayed for a Livelihood. Starts at line 2030. Book three, Masnavi. We are foxes, friends of God, our legs who save us from so many dangers that are grave. Our subtle scheming is our tale, and we make love to it each day continually. We wag our tails with our argumentation to dazzle men and win their admiration. We want to dazzle people constantly and lustfully grab at divinity to rule hearts with mere spells, but there's a hitch. You can't see that. We are stuck deep in a ditch. You wretch, you're in a ditch despite your airs. Keep your nose out of other men's affairs. Once you have reached a lovely garden, you can then lead other people up there too. You live in the material world's cramped go and try to guide the rest to no avail. You serve the donkey kissing its backside, yet try to lead us to the place with pride. Serving God didn't suddenly appear in you, so how did lust for rule reach here? Tied cords around yourself just to make everyone say bravo. Now to you, fox, leave this tale of tricks and cunning things. Trust your heart now to the mystic kings. Lion's protection guarantees you meat, so don't rush to car carcass now to eat. You'll start to love God at that moment, so when you move like a uh, part back to its whole, God said, We watch the heart and do not pay heed to the form of water and mere clay. You answer, I too own a heart, you know. Real hearts are higher than God's own throne, though. There's water and dark mud across the land, but that's not suitable to wash your hand, for it's been spoiled by mud, so don't you start to claim your heart is also a real heart. Hearts loftier than have the heavens are possessed by Abduls and prophets, not the rest. Cleansed of soil, theirs is purified and has grown to be complete immaculate, abandoning soil it has now reach the sea, it's oceanic, from soil's go, it's free. Our water, though, is trapped in mud today. Ocean of mercy draw us out of clay. The ocean says, I'll drag you here somehow, but you pretend you are sweet water now. Your own pretense blocks you. Give up that view and come out into me as I draw you. Water and mud desires to join the sea, but mud still pulls its feet back stubbornly. If water frees its feet from mud's grip, then mud is left dry and it is free again. What draws from mud the water, friend of mine? Attraction to the mystic sweets and wine. There is a very similar kind of lust for rank and wealth in this low realm of dust. Each one of these makes you intoxicated and hangovers come when your soul lust frustrated. 
The hangover's ache proves your drunkenness originates from sources valued less. Don't take more of these things than you must, or you'll soon conquer and rule over, or they'll soon conquer and rule over you. You turned away. I have a heart, you cried. I am in union with needs satisfied. Water and mug once turned away and said, I am pure water. Why should I seek aid? You reckon that polluted thing a heart, and from the mystic lords kept it apart. That thing loves milk and honey. Do you feel it should be counted as a heart that's real? Sweetness is the heart's shadow, so of course. Each sweet thing gets this from the heart, its source. The heart's the essence, and the world is just an accident for which no heart can lust. Can hearts love wealth and status like a fool or be the captive of a muddy pool or worship vain thoughts and an imagination for the sake only of good reputation? The heart's not but a notion of pure light. It's where you see God. How can it lack sight? The heart's not owned by anyone around, just, but just one person. Where can he be found? Forget those crumbs and seek a complete heart, friend. See yours will be a mountain in the end. The heart encompasses all being you'll see. It scatters gold through generosity. It scatters blessings through its own volition from God to reach the world's whole population. All gold that the heart scatters is collected. By those whose skirts are ready and corrected, your skirts, your desperate need for God, no less. Don't place in it your store of wickedness, or else it might get torn by that mistake. Then you won't tell a real coin from a fake. You filled your skirt with worldly stones, a few being gold and silver, just as children do. It's almost done. Patience is called for. There are imaginary, since there's no gold. Your skirt got torn and grief increased tenfold. How can a stone be seen as a mere stone by children till their brain makes this fact known? The pure is wisdom, not mere graying hair, which cannot reach their realm beyond compare.